All right, what's up guys? I uh, thought I'd do a little bit uh, something different here for this video today. I just want to show you some of the uh, process I normally use when I uh, write a uh, post on my blog about uh, different players and uh, kind of the sort of uh, thought that goes into uh, doing uh, those little player uh, specials and stuff like that. I don't know if we're going to actually write about this guy or not, but I wanted to show you sort of what happens and what it looks like. So uh, we go over here in that game that we just saw today, the uh, 1908 Reds who are a hard luck team. They weren't really that bad. They finished in fifth place in real life, and so maybe they will be able to turn it around, but they're pretty bad in the replay. And, man, that attendance is uh, not great. Um, so in this game, as you'll remember, we had a catcher named Pierce, right, who only had two games in real life, four um, plate appearances. I became interested in him, and so I went over here and I looked him up, right? And uh, you can see he didn't really have much of a uh, major league career. He had no uh, base hits in his um, six times at bat in two seasons. Um, he struck out once and uh, hit a sacrifice fly. <laughs> um, so interesting thing about war is he gets a minus uh, 0 0.1 war. This is one of those places where I think the war is very deceptive, right? Because this guy clearly was not major league talent, right? It's pretty clear that um, if he had the ability to play in the major leagues, he probably would have had more than six plate appearances, right? There's probably something about this guy that prevented him from getting up that high. We can look at his uh, player biography here. I mean, you know, I don't know. He died in 1933. He played in the majors barely. He didn't really play in the majors that much, really. Um uh, he played uh, He played for Oakland in 1913, was over in Ips Ypsilanti um, the same year at some point in time. And uh, they're crediting a Wikipedia article talking about the team in general, which um, is actually pointing to, uh, I see this uh, little thing right here, managed by Ducky Pierce. We can go look over here at Wikipedia and we can't see much. Anyway, it doesn't tell you very much information. It doesn't tell you much information at all, right? So, yeah, he had four at-bats total, but uh, six plate appearances, um, which means that something happened. He probably had two sacrifices or something like that. One sacrifice. I don't know what happened to him the other at-bat. We can find out, though, and that's where this becomes really interesting, right? We can go over the game logs for both of these seasons, and uh, we can check out and see exactly what it is that Billy Pierce did, right? So he played in one complete game. He was actually um, brought in in the uh, first inning, and then he uh, played another complete game afterwards, right? So if we look at this as Cubs at the Reds game, of course we have no information about this here, but uh, we know that he um, was brought in to uh, relieve uh, Larry McLean. Now this is really strange. Oh, I see. The reason why it says zero is because it doesn't know what inning he was brought in. So McLean had two at-bats, and then Pierce replaced him at some point in time, and he had a walk, too. Um, it does not tell us he has a walk here, but it's pretty clear from this box score that um, he did have a walk in this game, and that's where that other plate appearance comes from. So we've stalled that mystery already, and in uh, Pierce's other game, he did a whole lot of nothing. Um, that was against uh, Brooklyn. And then in 1909, uh, we can check this out as well, and it uh, looks like he played just very, very little slivers of both games with one plate appearance in May 29th and May 30th, right? It doesn't tell you very much, right? And it's not really all that interesting, and that's where we come over to newspapers.com. So there are some things that we can figure out, right? First thing I would usually do if I'm looking at this is I would say, okay, what can the Cincinnati Inquirer tell me about this on July 2nd, 1908? So go over to Papers and Browse. This only works if you have, you know, one of the more full versions of it. I think it might work with the one that comes through Sabre. I don't know. Um, Cincinnati Inquirer, Inquirer is uh, what I recommend using for this. In 1908, it wasn't that great. If you have, like, 1900, it's uh, much better. But, of course, for 1900, Retro Sheet and uh, Baseball Reference are not caught up all the way. So there's that. You don't want to go to July 1st. You want to go to July 2nd because you're looking at the game that was played July 1st. Now, you can see from here, right, we can't really tell which page of the paper is the one we're looking for. I usually will go for page, like, 6. Earlier, Cincinnati Inquirer, it's usually page 3 or 4 if you're talking about 1900. Here, it's probably going to be page 6. Nope, this is the uh, editorial page. So then we go over to 7. No, it's not going to be that. 8, 9, 10. Nope. Okay, well, we'll go back to page 4 then. And here you go, page 4. There is the uh, sports section. Once you've done this enough, you can see it uh, at a glance. And, uh, yeah, we're not going to be able to read much of this. Now, here we go, the debut of Pierce. Maybe we will read some of this. Bunny Pierce has been touring the country with the Reds ever since the season opened, warming up pitchers and carrying mass bats and protectors and generally making himself useful without gaining much glory. At last, a chance came to break in the lineup, and he eagerly accepted it. Long Larry's throw throwing was way off in the early innings, and he complained of a sore, sore arm. That's going to be uh, Larry, uh, what's his last name, McLean. 
right? Um, so manager Gansel told, took him out in the seventh and called for Bunny. So they did call him Bunny. Um, I was wondering about that nickname. He called for Bunny who couldn't get out to the play quick enough. The recruit didn't have long to work, but made a very favorable impression during his brief appearance. He came to bat only once, and his eye was keen enough to extract a pass from Mr. Rollback, one of the trio in- issued by that worthy. John Kling essayed to try out the youngster's arm in a few minutes later and was thrown out a mile. So how about that? He actually had a... Uh, an assist in the field. Now, is he credited with that? He is. He's credited actually with three assists in 1908, which is pretty good for a guy, a catcher who played in two games. That's not bad. Uh, Pierce the style is that of a man who knows what he is behind the bat for. He is likely to get another chance before long. And yeah, blah, blah, blah. So that's it. That's the story of Pierce's debut. And now if we want to find more information, so what I would usually do is I, you have to pull up another newspapers.com thing if you want to save where you were before. We're going to go take a look here at the second game. So we got the uh, Reds against the Suburbs. This is another uh, uh, home game for Cincinnati. And so we can take a quick look here, see Cincinnati. Um, we'll go back again to the uh, Cincinnati uh, Inquirer. There it is in 1908. And uh, this was in August, right? August 16th. So we'll look at the August 17th page. There we go. We'll just go over here to uh, page four and see it's not going to be here. It's probably going to be on page six. If not, it might be a little bit um, earlier in, and it looks like it is. So probably not page two. It's probably page three. There it is, page three. How about that? So I don't have to look through the entire paper to find it. This one's a lot easier to read. Um, I just want to see really quick if we have anything in here about Pierce at all. Um, yeah, it's over here in the second game. So it's the second game of the doubleheader that Pierce was in. He started and played the entire game. Um Huggins was poorly handled by Pierce, and Hummels was safe. So, uh, yeah, it was a low throw by uh, Huggins to try to cut off uh, Hummel uh, while he tried to score on a uh, play at the plate, and it didn't work out that well, and so uh, that was it for him. And um, I'm not sure if we're going to see any other, um, yeah, we're, we're not going to see much other uh, mention of him except for this. Bunny Pierce had the nerve to bunt on a third strike, and he got away with it. That's one sign of a good ball player, right? So that'll show you that's a little bit of information, but it's two games, 1908. Now, this is the other thing that we can do, which is we can search for Bunny Pierce. I like to search for that with quotation marks on. And what we'll look for is uh, 8, so let's see, August 18th, 1908 to uh, December 31st, 1908. And we'll do Cincinnati. This will give us uh, both Cincinnati papers. And now we'll see if they pick up anything or not. So uh, they got something on the uh, 22nd. And... um, Oh, look at this. So there was an injury at some point in time to uh, Bunny Pierce. And see, this is where you can get a lot of the information that you find, right? So there's a whole bunch of stuff in there about him. Um, we uh, can look at a couple of other little things here and there. He injured his foot, right? So uh, he was injured uh, June 7th at Scranton, um, which is before his uh, debut. Interesting that they would list that there as part of your Reds baseball chronology. Um, and uh, I'm going to see here if they talk about uh, debut for him at all. It doesn't really look like that. They say Reds get two hits off rule box, so there was that. <laughs> um, yeah, not too much. They're just finding you know little bits of baseball news from every single day. This wouldn't be necessarily so great um, if you were trying to figure out um, uh, like what the transactions are and stuff like that, but it's something. It's something you can play around with. Um, so uh, we look over here at this one. Uh, apparently he had been playing in Newark before um, he was found, and so that's what the uh, mention of Bunny Pierce is there, August 27, 1908. Doesn't really mean all that much. Um, in uh, December 1908, yeah, here we go. This is a uh, story from uh, Larry McLean. And he says, We were at bat, and Bunny Pierce made the longest hit ever seen in that country, knocking the ball clear into the... Uh, something into the gulf i see here because three sides that they were playing in key west florida where three sides of the fence were fenced in but the sea served for the fence on the fourth side <laughs> i've read about that stadium um anyway so you can you can go with this one and pierce gets a uh, he got around the bags with an inside the park home run and was given a, a new pair of shoes for that one which is pretty fitting. Anyway, that's an example of the sort of stuff that you can find. This is from the Cincinnati Post, which is why the um, uh, paper looks a little bit more modern, a little bit more like what we would probably expect from a newspaper. Um, And here you go. Bunny Pierce has gone home with an injured foot. And so that tells you what happened to him later on the season. That's on August 26, 1908. So 
that's basically what we do. We could do probably the same thing as well. I don't want this video necessarily necessarily go on forever, but you could do the same thing as well for the same player um, in 1909. You can figure out where he goes to the minors, and if you're really interested, you can figure out where he came from beforehand um, and uh, try to trace along his career. And just like that, you have an article to write, right? And you have an interesting anecdote that nobody probably knew about, and you have some interesting stuff about him in the papers, and uh, you have at least some sort of idea of how he played. Now, this isn't going to tell you all the story about him, right? But it is a little bit sort of like doing the research on Moonlight Graham, right? Where we're trying to figure out, okay, this guy must have played at some level and done something. Nobody gets to the major leagues by doing nothing and then has no at-bats and then disappears, right? We can find out more about him. And uh, there's a lot of players you could do this for, right? It's pretty cool stuff. The search tools are powerful. You should note that the search tools won't find you everything. Like sometimes you do have to go day by day, and that's where the real work and the real like you know tediousness of this kinds of kind of comes out. But aside from that, it's actually a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it, and um, we'll probably continue to do it um, indefinitely. So um, anyway, there you have it. I thought I'd uh, show you a little bit of what that's like, and uh, yeah, now we know who Bunny Pierce was. Imagine that. Talk to you later. Bye.